You're playing Missile Silo completely wrong. But don't worry, today I'm gonna tell you how to have insane raids at Missile Silo. This guide will go over literally everything about Missile Silo, how to have good raids even if you're going naked, hardly kitted, or fully kitted, and even if you're running solo or with a partner. And let's get started with running solo naked. All right, we're in. We're in kitchen, $20,000 hot sauce right off spawn. Holy, you cannot make this up. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now we're starting off insanely strong and insanely fast, but I found a $20,000 rare item, and whenever you're in this situation where you find a rare item like this, and you're naked, no backpack, no gun, nothing, you're most likely just gonna wanna book it to an exfil. That's exactly what I did in this clip, I jumped straight down the silo to go to the sewers exfil, and while most of the time this can work out for you, as you can see in this clip, it did not work out for me, sadly. There was just a terrible NPC spawn for me, and I did not make it out alive. Now that's not to say that this strategy doesn't work, literally right before this, I recorded a few instances where I literally got away with 20k items like this, like the Chudrek cheese and the Viper sauce that I had and lost in this clip. So the strategy is possible and it works, and I'll show the footage on screen, obviously, while I'm talking. I accidentally recorded it in vertical, that's why it's not in the video. But yeah, this strategy can work, but let's get into some more normal scenarios if you don't find things like that right off the bat. Alright, starting off in our first raid where we're going in without anything, I am looking for a weapon. This might sound dumb, obviously you're gonna want to find a weapon if you have nothing else, that's the first thing you look for. But for some reason, I always see people losing things before they even have a gun on them and that is just the wrong way to play. There's certain containers that you can't even get guns from so don't loot those ones. There's specific containers that are better to loot. All the long gun crates obviously are the best to loot for. There's one other way to get a gun other than looting it and this is one of my favorite ways because it's 100% guaranteed you'll get one is all you have to do is kill an NPC. If you didn't know this in Ghost of the Boar, you can actually break the necks of an NPC allegedly. You know I have to say allegedly on YouTube even though it's just a game. Doing that will secure you a free weapon and three magazines. I always reload one of the three magazines that drop into that gun because the one that's loaded isn't always full. Now, after you secure that weapon is when you can choose what play to make. My personal favorite is going for players as you can usually get a backpack by killing them. And also you take no loss doing this. If you go in with nothing, even if you find a weapon, you're still technically at a zero loss. So you can make any play you want really. Now you can do that or you could go for some other loot spawns, but that's not as good of a method, obviously, because you won't have a backpack. But there are some places where there is a chance for a backpack to spawn. On Missile Silo specifically, in the elevator, there's a chance the backpack spawns. Even though that's really risky to go for, maybe you just really need backpacks. But also, I wouldn't recommend going into a raid completely naked anyway. I would always buy a sling bag. They're extremely cheap from the kiosk, and you don't need to be any level trader to get it. As you can see in this clip, once I secured a backpack and a gun, I instantly started running to good loot locations. The offices and the kitchen probably have the best loot in all of Missile Silo. I also made sure to check out Skull Room, because not only can the 20 thousand dollar skull rare loot spawn be there there's also a lot of different areas you can get weapons like the lockers and the gun crate that's in skull room and then after that i proceeded to the kitchen always keep in mind there is a player spawn back there so if you're pushing it it is extremely likely someone is in there the reason why offices and kitchen are the best to loot in all of silo is because there's a bunch of rare loot spawns that can get you insane money really fast and also just a lot of general loot locations too as you can see there's like three desks in here each single desk has three small drawers which can spawn on all kinds of goodies like scopes and stuff like that attachments that are really good to sell at spectre as well as things like grenades other pieces of junk and sometimes even purple cards each desk also has a big drawer which can spawn pistols as well as other things like even gpus which i found before very very rare but i have found one and also there is one filing cabinet that filing cabinet is major league because you can always find pistols like five sevens glocks all kinds of stuff in drawers never leave a drawer unlooted also i have found a flight recorder one one time in the office room on a bookshelf, but that is an extremely rare spawn if it's even still in the game. There's also one weapon box and one helmet armor box, which can spawn armor modules as well as helmets. Making the office alone insane for loot, but not only that, in the kitchen there is the chance for the pre-mentioned cheese and hot sauce. If you don't know, those are items made for YouTubers. The hot sauce and the cheese are both worth 20k, so finding those is your highest priority in this. Now it's a static spawn. If you don't know what a static spawn is, it's basically there's a spawn that will always be there but it's only a chance that the item actually spawns in that spawn. I said spawn so many times, oh my gosh. Now this is one of the good spots to loot in Missile Silo and I would always take your opportunity to loot it if you can get it to yourself. I'd also recommend while you're looting, always picking up every single scope, core grip, silencer, any weapon attachment you can find, always pick those up. If you're new to Ghost of Deborn and don't know this, leveling up your traders is very key to getting OP loot later in the game. And Spectre will take a lot of those attachments for a lot of money. Almost 
every scope is worth a thousand dollars or more as well as the four grip suppressors everything and that adds up really really fast one more thing that shows off how amazing your naked raids could be is finding this crypto wallet crypto wallets can be worth anywhere from 200 karunas to 200,000 karunas now this is 100 percent luck based and it's more likely than not that you'll get less than a thousand karunas yeah, we'll throw it in there 1800 now i'll cover having a mid-level kit really briefly because it's honestly very similar to going in naked except for you already start with the gun and backpack that you would have been looking for basically you're going to want to either stay and loot some things or take out some players for their loot now if you're playing solo it's probably better that you go out and fight people and be more aggressive because there's only six people that spawn in a single game of silo so if you can eliminate two to three people it will make silo a lot more quiet for you and a lot less deadly to loot and i recommend if you're going in with that kit to try to loot the kitchen the office the elevator if you can get to it it's harder when you're solo and also try to get the crypto wallet that's in the storage container exfil i almost forgot to mention but you should also go looking for a skull as well it will be highly contested though so be ready to fight some players and the two scavs that will spawn there all right and i think that covers everything let's get into the uh next half of the video and let's talk about going in fully kitted Holy shit, I almost just died. All right, for the rest of this video, I'm considering everything for all intents and purposes fully kitted as night vision, so minty level three. At minty level three, you unlock the night vision level two and a uh, few night vision helmets and the tan vest, which is tier four armor, I believe. The reason I'm counting this fully kitted is because tier one night vision is honestly unusable, but tier two night vision and you can use the IR laser is such a great combo. I'm also jiri level three, meaning I also have armor piercing rounds. Just so you guys understand my kit a little better i also have the mpx which is basically just an mp9 fully kitted is literally the same as the other two except for you're really going to be pushing player spawns right off the bat fully kitted with the duo is also actually like amazing because together you guys can push separate spawns or push spawns together your main goal in doing this is going to be two things one killing the boss and two killing every single player on all of silo so all the loot is yours so the first thing we're going to go over is what player spawns you could be pushing what you should be doing to get all the players eliminated on silo now the first thing you need to realize about silo is there's only a handful of spawns on the map all right as you can see every single exfil is marked by one of these little purple arrows now we're gonna go from the basement floor which is the very bottom floor going all the way up the silo on floor zero or the basement floor as i like to call it there's only two spawns and they are a hundred percent across the map from each other one of them is directly under one of the spawns that are on a higher up floor which will go over on that floor obviously and there's three roots away from that spawn and the spawn on the other side of the silo can either go straight across to where the boss room is straight across and left to go to the other player spawn and the missile silo or they can go up the staircase to the right and end up on a bunch of different floors all right moving on to floor one or what i call floor two we only have one spawn in this entire floor from here you could either go down the silo and or up the silo or you could go to your other side and run up towards where skull is but more importantly if you spawn here and you're hunting for players you can go down a floor to kill players on the very bottom floor or you can go out the silo way and you can go ahead and jump down on the player that will spawn under you if he doesn't come up now onto one of the most important floors on the entire silo this is floor number two but i call it floor number three because it's two above the basement the reason why this floor is so important is because there's not only three places where players can spawn there's a lot of the loot and a lot of the events that happen all on this floor there's the boss spawn bunch of npc spawns and of course you know three player spawns this is the same floor where you can also find the skull and also the hot sauce and the cheese so it's a very very important floor now if you spawn behind the parking garage this is honestly one of the most optimal spawns here you can either push to your other side and you can take the long way around the silo to the kitchen if you go this way you will be able to check out not only a player spawn that is over there directly outside the door you can also check on the one spawn that is below that floor as it connects directly to the same room that you're going to anyway and after you check out those two player spawns you can also go straight across and you will be facing down the hallway of kitchen and offices you can go this way or you can cut straight through where the boss room is and you can check out kitchen from that direction now if you're playing fully kitted and with a friend I'd recommend you split up and look for clues like it's Scooby-Doo and one go each of these ways. It's an optimal way to try to take out as many players as you can. Now, assuming you spawn at the other spawn that I would suggest you go to first if you spawn at garage, I'd suggest you either contest whoever spawns at garage, contest whoever spawns under you down that staircase, or going straight to kitchen. All of this is preference, but I would say whatever you do, you're always going to want to end up rotating towards kitchen anyway. Now, assuming you already spawn at kitchen, the first thing you're going to want to do is look for the 
the hot sauce, cheese, all those items. If there's two of you, great. Have one protect while one loots. And if it's just you, you might want to go out, kill some players before you come back and loot the room at the end of the raid. Because trust me, when you are digging through those drawers, someone's going to get you where you least expect it. If you look for just big ticket items, I would suggest you either run towards the other player spawns or go straight to Skull, because there is only two ways into Skull. Down the hallway or through the squeaky door. This should give you the advantage on the players if you are patient. And the very last spawn is on the locker room spawn right above the skull room. It is uh, secluded and there's a lot of good weapons up there. First thing I'd suggest is going straight down to the squeaky door and going straight to skull. I also want to help you guys out with this one extremely important tip. If you're ever jumping down silo, the fastest way is to just run right off the sides. Doing this can be risky because you can end up taking fall damage if you mess it up, but it is much, much faster than taking the ladder. To do this, all you literally do is just sprint right off the side and uh, whatever you do, don't jump. That will mess up your landing. And that was my entire guide to playing missile silo in 2024. If you gained any knowledge from this video, please do me a favor and go ahead and hit the video on screen. In this video, I try to make $100,000 with only three lives in Ghost of Dabor, and let me tell you, it gets really intense and you're gonna love it.